2019. Happy New Year, everyone! <laughs> my name is Garmin, and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, sometimes other crafts, and basically my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. You can find me on Instagram as at newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list all of the other things right here. So, the first episode of 2019, I'm feeling super energized today. I'm really hopeful about this year, and I'm really happy looking back on the past year. So, yeah, I'm in a really good place right now, and I hope you are too. Um, I have worked on three projects for the last two weeks, and which is kind of an all-time low for me. <laughs> I'm usually working on a lot of stuff at the same time. Um, but these past two weeks, I have been addicted to mainly one project. And then I had two projects on the side. Um, and before I start talking about those, I want to quickly mention that we have two make-alongs going on at the moment. One is a crochet along from my Shirf Rainbow Blanket, which is a free pattern on my blog. Um, and one is a make-along for the Scapius Folk magazine. And I have it right here. There's some stuff on top, so bear with me for a second. So the Scapius Folk magazine has lots of patterns in there I think about 15 or 17 and um, I'm hosting a make-along for any project in here and I am making the Olga cardigan which I haven't worked on uh, <laughs> during the last two weeks but um, yes you will see why because my attention has been caught or how do you say this I've been obsessed with my Shiv Rainbow Blanket. I have been um, neglecting it for a couple of months. I started this one in October, or maybe the last day of December, which was uh, the start of the Shiv Rainbow Blanket Cal, which is the one I'm hosting in my Ravelry group New Leaf podcast. And I worked on it in October, and then I didn't work on it anymore for almost two months. Except for the last week of December, and I decided to work on it again. So, this is what you will already have seen. This is the start of my blanket, and um, the idea of the Shiv Rainbow Blanket uh, is that you work with a double gradient. And so you have two sets of colors and one set is with 50 gram balls and the other rainbow set is with 10 gram balls or 15 gram balls in case of the uh, Excel blanket. And then, uh, so I have made the rainbow uh, set up for you and then you just, um, you just go in, in that order. And for the 50 gram balls in the Excel version, you can use them for three rows. You have enough yarn to use them for three subsequent rows. But for the 15 gram balls, you can only use them for one row. So the main color, or not the main color, but the bigger ball <laughs> color, um, you use them for three rows. See, here's another three and here's another three of the same color, uh, but the smaller 15 gram balls, you change them every row. So I had crocheted about until here, I think. So this much in October. And as from two weeks ago, I have added, yes, this much. Woo! It's quite a lot. <laughs> I worked on it almost every day. And I am so obsessed with these colors. <laughs> I cannot see the screen anymore. 
Um, but yes, I love these colors, especially the pinks and the greens. Yes, totally loving these. And I have two main colors to go. So two balls of 50 grams, which is a, which gives a total of 17 50 gram balls, I think. And I have about six or seven smaller balls, six. I have six uh, 15 gram balls to go. So yeah, I will probably finish this really soon now, which is great because the crochet along is ending on February the 1st. Um, yeah, but most people that have joined the crochet along have finished their blanket within one month. So there's still time to join in and get a good chunk of the pattern done. And um, yeah, and mind you, this is the Excel version. Um, the normal version, which only uses 10 50 gram balls, um, is much quicker. So. I have crocheted on this for six weeks now, so, and the original version can be done in about four weeks, or maybe even quicker than that. Depends on how many projects you have going at the same time, I guess. So yes, I'm really, really happy with how this is going, and I can't wait to make the fringe. Yeah. But I am waiting with the fringe to um, for at the very end because I want to wash the entire blanket once um, and then add the fringe because um, it doesn't really happen with this yarn. But um, I'm gonna tell you that what the yarn is in just a second. But usually when you wash fringe, it kind of just loses its shape or it becomes too fuzzy or um yeah usually after washing fringe doesn't look that great um so that's why i wanted to wash the blanket before adding the fringe and now the yarn the yarn is scapius stone washed and river washed and you may know that for uh scapius stone washed and river washed they have a yarn pack uh, like a huge box, it's kind of like a pizza box. <laughs> it's very thin, but um, big and square. And it contains 50 tiny balls uh, of 10 grams for the regular weight, which is about a DK weight, and uh, 15 gram balls for the Excel, which would be a worsted, I think. I'm really bad at these yarn weights. Um, yes, so 50 balls, so 50 different colors, which is amazing. And um, so I have designed the Shift Rainbow Blanket with this yarn pack, with this color pack in mind. And um, the same yarn, Scapey Stone Washed and River Washed, also comes in 50 gram balls, which I've also used, as I said for the uh, background colors. So uh, it's such it's such a fun uh, fun project and I'm I'm so so happy and uh, I'm loving seeing all of your projects in the um, New Leaf podcast group. We have a little thread uh, for the Shiv Rainbow Cal and um, we also have the hashtag Chef Rainbow Cal on Instagram and Facebook, and I just love seeing all of your photos. Um, and I like that everyone everyone is making their own version. Um, yeah, it's just really really nice. Um, okay, so the colors I still have to use is this 50 gram ball, which is. Rhine color 992 from the River Washed series, and after that comes main color, um, the last main color, which is called Danube or Danube, I don't know, colorway 988. These are all River Washed. 
the bigger ones. And then I'm using the smaller balls. So with the first, or with the first upcoming um, main color ball, I'm using this one, this cute little orange one. So that's gonna be in between there. And then, so after that comes one more row of this, and then I'll add this color, and then one more row of the rind, and I'll, I'll add this one, and then, oops, and then I'll switch to the Danube, and I'll use this little cutie, um, and then the two final balls, so one of these, and then one more row of this, and then this one, and one more row of the Danube, so. Yes, I'm really excited about this. And it's gonna be pretty big when it's finished. I mean, it's about one meter 60 right now. And I still have about 20 centimeters to add. Let's see. No, that's about 15, I think. So about 15 centimeters to add, so yeah, that will be in between 170 and 180 uh, at the end. So that's really exciting. And I've already been thinking about <laughs> what I'm going to crochet after this, but I have some really cool inspiration at the end uh, because there are so many blanket patterns out right now and yeah, I've just compiled a list and I will show you some of the inspiration. All right, the second project I've been working on, I'm keeping in this cute bag, which I got for Cesar class, I think, two years ago. It opens like this. It's basically a huge square. So I think it would not be too difficult to sew, but I can't sew, so. <laughs> um, anyway, and there is my new cow. Isn't really new, I've been working on this since uh, the Knitting and Stitching show in October. So this is also an October project. And uh, so I started it at the knitting and stitching show in London and I'm using this little double decker as my progress keeper. So cute. And this is my lunch project. So when I'm working at my day job, I like to bring a small project to uh, work um, so I can work on it during my lunch break. And I've done quite a bit, so yeah. This is a cowl. It's quite long already. I should probably just stop, but I kind of want to finish the entire ball. Maybe I should try it on. So this is uh, the Timber Cowl, which is a free pattern on my own blog. It's called Timber because there are um, lines in between the uh, rows. And I just kind of thought it looked like the aged line of trees. So let me just put it on for you. <laughs> and I have already made one timber cowl last year. And that one was what much shorter than this one. So I wanted to make a really long version. I could add a few more uh, inches, so I think I'll just finish this. Yeah, I think it looks nice. It's really nice and warm. And see if it, if it folds down. Yeah, there is still some, some space. I can still add some, some more rows. Yeah, so you can fold it over if you want. And yeah, I don't know exactly if I followed the 
stitch count. I might have done a different stitch count for this one, but I'll check with that. Um, I'll check that when, when I'm finished with this one. Uh, yeah, so it's really nice and easy. And the yarn I'm using is Capes R Tribe, which is a 70% superwash merino and 30% acrylic or polyamide uh, blend. And um, this colorway is designed by Matt from a Boy and Bunting blog. Uh, who is a escape use blogger and um, all of the escape use bloggers including myself we got to design a colorway for the art tribe yarn which is really really exciting um, and Matt chose these colors uh, which is moody purple and blue and a little pink or violet yeah so really cute yeah and again it's so super soft and really nice to work with. It's single ply, um, so it might take some getting used to uh, for beginner crocheters. As with single ply, it's easier to split the yarn, but I, you know, being an, an experienced crocheter, I am not experiencing any difficulties with this yarn it's just really really nice to work with and I've crocheted with it I've knit with it it's just it's just super nice um, yeah and really really soft as well the third and final project I've been working on is a project that again I've been working on for a long time <laughs> um, Kind of feels like a, that's the theme of this podcast episode. The rainbow blanket I started in September or early October. Um, probably September, yeah. The boy and bunting cowl I started halfway October. And this project, I think it started even earlier. I think early September. I will just show you a little sneak peek of this because it is still a design in progress and yeah I it's not finished yet so I'm just showing you the fabric <laughs> so this lovely little bundle it's so soft and cozy so this is knit with two yarns held together and it's so cozy. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that? It's so nice. I'm knitting the, this with two yarns held together and they are Scapius Merino Soft Brush, which is this one. It's a little bit um, speckled. Uh, it's, oh, I forgot the fiber content. Well, it's Merino and something. Um, and it's so, so soft. So this is Merino Soft Brush uh, in the Van Dijk colorway, which is this really cute pink color and then I'm also holding it with mohair which is Scapius Rhythm mohair which is this really cool um, pink purple color and together it makes this really cool textured um, fabric yeah really really nice so this is uh, Scapius Rhythm mohair in the jitterbug colorway um yay and i'm just really really liking this um it's becoming a sweater and i'm thinking of just calling it the pink sweater um and my patrons will know all about this and i will um i recorded just a little video this morning um i've been i've been uh, taking them through the whole process, but but this morning I really made um, a huge 
amount of progress and I think I finally have the grading um, finished. And grading for a garment pattern is uh, what you call um, if you're calculating different sizes. So uh, this pattern will be available for sizes XS to XXL. Um, and of course, I'm not knitting all of those sizes, so I'm just calculating all of the sizes from uh, my gauge, uh, from my blocked gauge and my unblocked gauge. Um, and that is quite a challenge. Um, yes, and my patrons will know all about it, and they have supported me so much. They've given me, given me lots of pep talks. Um, and I'm super, super grateful for that. And um, about my Patreon page. So um, as a new happy, <laughs> I mean, happy new year uh, surprise, I've given them a 50% discount on all of my patterns in my Ravelry store. Um, and if you want to benefit from that discount as well, then hop on over to my Patreon page and choose an amount to support me with every month and then you will get that discount code as well, which is valid until the end of the month. Um, but every month I have uh, discount codes for my patrons, but this month I decided to make it a 50% discount. So yeah, <laughs> I probably won't do that. Um, for the rest of the year. Um, yes, so that was my pink sweater. And, okay, I'm going, going to show you a fun new uh, knitting book that I got during Christmas. And then I will show you some lovely inspiration from uh, new patterns that have been published in the last month. Um, so the new knitting book that I have acquired <laughs> during Christmas is, well, it's in Dutch, but it's also available in English. It's from Machi Machi World, um, which you may know because of this cute gnome. He has been super popular and I've been following Machi Machi World or Machi Machi Land or maybe both. I think she's Machi Machi World on Instagram, but her website is machimachiland.com. Yeah, and her real name is Anna, and her last name is really complicated, so I'm just gonna <laughs> type it on the screen. And these, uh, so this book contains about 15 patterns, oh no, 25 patterns um, for all of these knitted cuties, and there's even an island you can knit an island oh my god and um there are boats and eggs and a computer there is a plane so i'm thinking of these as just really cute stuff uh maybe maybe cute gift tags um uh, if someone has their swimming certificate, you can make them a mermaid, you know, some something like that. Uh, there's a baby. <laughs> uh, cupcakes, a hot dog. Super cute. Yeah. Oh, I just want to make them all. There are the eggs. Oh, so cute. Uh, but especially the gnome, I think it's really, really cute. Chickens. This would be really cute for uh, Easter decorations. Um, and they also have a Christmas tree and a Rudolph. Oh, I just cannot get over this book. It's so cute. It's so cute. There's a telephone. Oh, yes, very, very cute. So um, I can't wait <laughs> to knit a gnome from this, a hot dog, corn, a bunny, a computer. Yeah, I can't wait. And um, in this book, 
they're saying you can use double pointed needles but I think I will probably just use my circular knitting needles I mean isn't this cool like when someone goes on a big trip and you can just knit them a tiny plane to accompany them on their trip right so yeah just really really cute stuff okay and uh, as I said I wanted to share some patterns that have been published um, in the last month I think all of them have been published in the last month and then some more inspiration so the first one I wanted to talk about and I'm gonna place uh, I'm gonna put in pictures on the side of the screen. Uh, the first one is the Sophie's Dream Blanket, which is an amazing blanket pattern by my friend Deidre from Look At What I Made. And you probably know her from Sophie's Universe and from the Ubuntu Cal from Sleepies this past year. And um, Sophie's Dream is a blanket that uses four whirls, four Sleepies whirls and two scapey swirlets and you basically crochet the first section of the Sophie's Universe uh, blanket which is the kind of flowery center and then well amazingness um, so and the pattern will specify exactly which rows you need to crochet and then with each whirl um, you do three squares so you have 12 squares in total and then you make a border with the escape swirlette and it's just it's just stunning and I know I know a lot of people have been hoarding whirls <laughs> I, I completely understand because there are they are so so beautiful and if you have four whirls then you know this is uh, an amazing project to kick off 2019 with um i expect it going like like crazy because uh working with a whirl is so so much fun and you know you know sometimes a blanket can drag on but i have a feeling that the sophie's dream blanket will be just a dream <laughs> to work up um, and I wish I had the time to make one myself but I have too many plans for this year already so uh, but you know if say my mom would make this for me because I oh I love it so much but anyway so this is, this is the first uh, pattern that I wanted to share with you guys and it is for free on look at what I made a uh, block by Deidre. The second pattern that I wanted to share is also a blanket and it's also very very colorful and it's the fifth dimension blanket by Susan Carlson from Felted Button and the fifth dimension blanket is it uses five different stitch patterns and again I will be putting in a picture on the screen so and I'm looking at it myself now so um, there is one section of I think double crochet or something um, just short stripes and then there is well there are motives there is lace crochet uh, there is a white panel of crochet and then there is another rainbow panel which maybe half double crochet or single crochet can't really tell but it looks amazing and this uh, blanket also uses river washed so escape is river washed and possibly also stone washed probably which is the yarn that I'm using for my chiffre book uh, blanket as well no I think it only uses river washed and then for the white part it uses escape use color crafter which is a really um, it's just a basic acrylic yarn. Well, not basic, it's premium acrylic, but um, it's just really economical, so you can't go wrong with that. Um, and I love the contrast of the white and then the bright, colorful uh, sections. And this is a paid for pattern in uh, Felted Buttons Ravelry store. And she's hosting a cow as well, I believe it started last week. Yeah, it started January 2nd 
and then on January 7th they're starting with part one so yeah that will be a fun uh, crochet along to join and then thirdly also a blanket and this is a knitting blanket uh, or a knitted blanket is the Icarus blanket from Canada from Tammy um, who is knitter extraordinaire <laughs> and designer behind the read between the lines and crochet between the lines shawls which you probably know uh, she has designed an Icarus blanket which is a knit moss stitch blanket is it moss stitch I think so or seed stitch or is that the same I'm confused. <laughs> um, anyway, she is using, um, is it 10 or 8 different colors? 1, 2, 3, 4, only 5! Oh, I see. Okay, so she's using 5 different colors of the Scapius Soft Fun, which is an amazing yarn. It's, um, I think it's the best yarn that you can use for baby stuff. You can use it in a wash, and you can throw it in a washing machine. It doesn't fuzz uh, or anything, so um, yeah, it's really, really smooth. Uh, so she uses five colors, but as you can see in the uh, picture, it looks like she's using way more. But that's because she's using a double stranded. So first, see, she's using color A, double stranded. And then the next section, she's using one strand of color A and one strand of color B. And that's why it looks uh, like there's a new color. While well, it's just two colors combined, so that is awesome. And I was thinking, so um, I'm really into this ombre rainbow thing at the moment. And I was thinking if you use the Icarus blanket pattern, which is for free on Tammy's blog, Canadutch, uh, canadutch.nl, uh, what if you use this blanket pattern with the Shift Rainbow colors, right? With, I, I mean, with the Scapius um, Stonewashed regular color pack, which will be around the same thickness or yarn weight as the uh, Skippy Soft one, which Tammy uses for her bl blanket. I think that will, that will look stunning. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure about the yarn quantities, so it's probably the best to just follow Tammy's pattern. <laughs> you need about three to four balls of each color and it's super beginner friendly so if you want to try knitting a blanket then definitely check this one out the fourth uh, pattern inspiration that i have for you is not a blanket but it's well it's just as warm as a blanket it's a shrug all of the warm shrug by miss Nuris, by nurissa and um i've only seen frozen ones and i don't really remember this but I do know Olaf is the um, um, the snowman and apparently Olaf likes warm hugs so she is calling this shrug Olaf the warm shrug <laughs> and uh, it's a free crochet pattern on her blog Miss Nerys and it uses seven balls of Scapius Namaste which is a gorgeous single ply yarn and it's I don't know the exact weight, but it's it's lovely chunky. Uh, so let me see. She uses a 10 millimeter hook, so yeah. And she's written it in one size, which fits XL, uh, but which also fits a huge uh, range of sizes. So, um, and there are instructions on how to make it smaller or maybe even bigger. Um, yeah. And I'm just browsing her her blog post about it and her pictures are so beautiful and I love her hair. Nerissa has dyed her hair pink. <laughs> I've also dyed my hair a little bit pink. <laughs> um, anyway, so this seems like a great project um, to use KP's Namaste for. I don't have seven balls right now, but I'm really, really tempted to just order some 
because it seems like a really really quick project and then finally I have another bit of inspiration for you guys from Simi's studio uh, Simi is the creative director or one of the creative directors behind Escapies and she has her own blog which is called Simi's studio and this year uh, she's calling the year of mandalas and every month she has a color inspiration um, yeah, she has color inspiration um, in the form of a mandala and um, she challenges each and every one of us to come up with, um, well, to crochet or knit or weave or freeform crochet something uh, inspired on that mandala. Um, and this month, um, Yelena and Christina. So Yelena is from Yelena Creations and Christina is from A Spoonful of Yarn. And they have both uh, crocheted a mandala based on the color inspiration by Simi. And they are so beautiful. So it's, it's a really moody, moody blues, um, white, gray, black. Um, yeah, and um, you can... Um, you can of course make something for yourself with this inspiration as well and you can tag it with uh, let me just look up the hashtag Sim hashtag Simi's year of mandalas and she will have new color inspiration every month and I've already seen the one for February and it is amazing so yes if you um, even if you already have a project in mind but if you don't know uh, which colors to use yet, you can just take the inspiration from Simi and use those colors for your project. So I think that's gonna be really, really cool. And since she mentioned freeform crochet, I'm really tempted to get my freeform crochet skills uh, on again. So yes. I would be excited to make one of those, but I've never really made mandalas, so... But of course, the inspiration is mandala, so I don't think the actual project has to be a mandala, so... Whatever, you know, you can you can use it as your inspiration. Um, and I don't think there are any rules about inspiration. Um, so, yeah. Um... That was it for now. I mean, I could go on and on and on because there are so many beautiful patterns out there and these are just the ones uh, published in the last few weeks. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm just feeling so inspired for this year and I just want to make all the things, but of course I can't. So I'm just going to make what I feel like doing most um, and I'm just really excited about this year um, I am debating on doing a make nine challenge but um, I haven't really got all of my make nine together yet I have about four or five yeah I have five things I want to make and a couple of design ideas but I don't think those count for a make nine Anyway, uh, yeah, so I might do a make nine vlog, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> anyway, that was all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, episode. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and like. Um, that's giving a thumbs up. It's the same as like. So give a thumbs up um, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. I have lots more podcast episodes and I also have some tutorial videos if you want to check those out. And for more tutorial videos, you can also check out my Patreon page. And as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons who help support me as a designer and help support the YouTube channel. Um, Thank you all so much for watching again and have a very crafty couple of weeks and I hope to see you all next time.